this process, we will be making a, a body form. First step in the process is we wrap Phil in saran wrap. Now, I want to note, I do have Phil set up to be as comfortable as possible. He doesn't even have to hold his arms up. I've got buckets on top of stools to hold his arms up. And um, he's standing on anti-fatigue mats. So he is as comfy as I can make him, but this is not a comfortable thing. And I actually want to do, we're going to do him in two stages for comfort. We're going to do nips down, and then we're going to do belly button up. And then I can cut them and tape them together wherever I want. This will be uh, covered in heavy duty clear packing tape, about three layers. Then we will uh, <laughs> cut it off of him and then tape it back together. So it's its own thing that holds itself up and I'll put foam inside of it to make a solid figure. It would be fun. This is the same way that I make the transparent ghosts. I've also made ice creatures out of this. Um, it's a good technique for just a stiff, clear body form. And then, once I foam it, I've made my own mannequin. Right now I have about $35 invested in clear tape, which I'll probably use most of. So, yeah. I'm actually not going to tape over Phil's head on this. We're gonna get his neck, yes. But that's so that I can do a head form off of this guy, and we'll just take the two together. Using this technique, you can take one person's arms and put them on a different person's legs, and you, know, you can have that kind of fun with it if you want. But I just don't like making folks suffer through it for longer than we have to. Everybody grab uh, some tape. Here's tape. Here's tape. I have tape. Uh, you also want to grab a pokey savvy. No. Just to mess with Phil. No. All right, and we want to cover him in tape. And but this is clear, and this is clear, so it's very hard to tell where we were. So make sure that you have a system. So now, here is my trick for getting Phil out. I'm going to take this little shtick, and this goes in between the tape and the shirt. Raise your blade out, and I just cut it along his spine. But actually, I'm cutting on top of that popsicle stick. And Phil is going to get this huge sigh of relief when, uh, when it finally... When it's, it's gonna, yeah, you'll be able to breathe like never before. All right, so now we can have Phil just step out of this. Back it up, Phil. Back it up, Phil. All right, we're gonna set this off to the side. But look at how well that holds up. Something that I just did that I might want to make a little point about. I just made a copy of it, and I, I did not, I kind of duplicated it. I made a very rough copy. There's no face detail in there, and that's why I feel like this is okay. Because I could do this with Phil's head. It's just more convenient for me not to have to poke a saran wrap hole in the mouth and then do the head. I do that a lot. So what I'm doing right now is I'm opening up the Sika foam from Home Depot. It's an AB foam. It's about 11 bucks for this bag. I think I got another bag of this somewhere in here. I'm gonna get a bag in the head right away. This should take nine packs of this foam. Between eight and nine packs of this foam. I'm cutting this down the middle. Foam. 
foam, foam, foam. I've made equal amounts of A and B, so I'll do two little batches of foam. The B is split between this, these two cups, and the A is split between these two cups. So I'm gonna take a cup of A and a cup of B, pour them in, and I do not have long to mix, and then I'll dump it in the head. You guys see it increasing in volume? I do. Uh, you can use any kind of AB foam. Uh, go to a special effects store like Mold Life or something, and uh, they will have an AB foam that you can use. I use this because it's readily available and very cheap. I'm gonna mix up the second batch right away and put it in there. I don't see any point in waiting. It'll just make my cup harder to mix. But I'm gonna foam this up as much as I can, and then we'll take the uh, legs onto this, and then we can pour the foam in the top of the legs. Uh, I have one kit of foam distributed. I have some foam in the body all we made the other night. Uh, see, I've, that's one. I scratched one of my eyeballs, so that's why I'm wearing sunglasses. Now I can also fill that with some styrofoam chunks and let that foam fill in around those uh, to save material. I'm not super worried about that. You can see that this arm is now full and actually coming out, coming out past it. Okay, once again, I'm gonna wait till I see it rising. And I pour some down the arm hole. Once again, I'm gonna grab my sheet. Shrink this out. Don't waste any material. Take a kit, these are $11 each. There's this band of plastic in between the two. If I cut along the band, then I have a bag of A and a bag of B. Nipping off the corners of them. And I can tell by the viscosity inside the bag, the weight inside the bag, which one is A and which one is B. I call B the green one. I'm out of the way. This is the A side. Your stream of fluid can knock the cup over when you first start. So be careful about that. See, there's less B than there is of A. It's higher in the cup on this one. It doesn't matter that much. So this doesn't take super good mixing. If it, if it required a lot of mixing, then you wouldn't be able to do it while it's still in the bag. You know, you have to get it out and all that, scrape the sides. A very hardy foam for that purpose. My color change. It's no longer dark green, now it's a light green. And you're gonna see it rising. The leg of this is open. I've already filled up the arms. There could be a danger running down the wrist. But there's less of a danger because I, I've already filled the arms up. This side needs to be mixed. And that is one, one bag of foam gives you two head size batches. I use this for filling masks all the time inside of a mold or outside of a mold. You know, this batch might rise enough to uh, let that leg fill up. And I, I can, you know, it's popping off the top of that right there. You can see how it keeps rising. I throw it in this cup and I'm going to put it in this one. So it's not taking as many bags as I thought. I think this might be uh, seven bags to get him all the way tip top full. Alright, so he's full, but this foam is not cured. It's going to take a, a couple hours to cure. So I've done all the mixing, I've done all the pouring, I taped the body cast back together, I did it in two halves. And now he is full of foam. And as soon as this foam is all the way cured, I'm gonna give it probably till tomorrow. And then I'll cut this tape off with a razor blade. The tape and the uh, saran wrap gets cut off with a razor blade. I'm gonna start cutting off the skin.
So this was supposed to be, I came here, and I was going to film the final bit of this video to show you the finished mannequin. Instead, I'm going to show you that years later, uh, this guy is still kicking around. Uh, he's no longer shiny new. Um, he is set up to be freestanding. I don't have his arms on him right now. I don't have his head on him right now. But this sucker is so useful and has helped us build so many costumes. Many years later, uh, still working and doing a thing. It's not quite, I just finished this. This is years after we did it. And uh, there it is, still in the shop, being of use. Go make stuff. It's time for Patreon shout outs. I don't know if I have a lot of patrons in the witness protection program or something, but a lot of them say, I don't want a shout out. Just shout out your own crew. This is for all of the awesome people who work in the Stilt Bee shop. Not everything you see is done by my hand. A lot of folks are involved with that. So uh, they're awesome. If you see them out at a public or at a show, thank them and go make stuff.